up, everybody? This is Nick, and you're joining us once again for a Puck Podcast, a Pull Up a Chair Podcast. And as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host. This is Eric. And Eric, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm in kind of a... I'm getting married mood, and I just kind of... <laughs> it's a good mood to be in, and yeah, where you're doing, yeah, where I'm, you're at. Uh, Saturday will be my marriage day. I'll be there. Uh, day in... Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You'll be standing beside me. I'm sure your brother will be beside you. I'm sure I'll be down the way a little bit. Uh, you'll be a couple down. Like two or three, yeah. four, five down. Brother down, you know. Uh, they, we, we, there's no real order. <laughs> I'm going to have you guys, like, <laughs> rotate out. I've heard it's like, like, every, you're like, switch. I'll be like, all right, tag. It's like that basketball drill when you, like, weed yeah, or yeah, soccer. Yeah, you guys will, you guys, but here's the deal. You all have to pull it off without nobody noticing. <laughs> they're like ninjas. They're like, what was it? He, what? Wait a second. Wasn't Nick's brother next to how did Eric get next to him? Like, yeah, that's the that's the coordination <laughs> we got going. But Eric, I, I just I don't have a I mean, we're gonna do just one podcast. I mean, honestly, it's probably not even gonna be a long one. Because I'm in a I'm getting merry mood and I just I just wanted to hang out. We've just been talking. Yeah, I know. I'll be honest, we got here tonight, we've just been shooting the breeze and it's been great. Having fun. So this is this might be a short one, but there was a story I kind of wanted to talk about and wanted to get your opinion on. I don't know if you heard about this from J- our good friends uh, across the pond in Japan. Oh, J- across, <laughs> across the pond in Japan. But uh, there was Anissa. a gentleman, a 64-year-old male worker in Co- at the Kobe City, I know I'm nailing this, Waterworks Bureau. Mm-hmm. But he took some breaks. How dare he? He took... T- over a seven-month period, he took a total of 26 three-minute trips to a nearby store to get food, to get lunch. And what did this do? Well, it caused him to get reprimanded, one, by his company, but two, the company went on national television, the The Waterworks Bureau went on national television and apologized to the, the audience to the television audience on behalf of this uh, this incident happening. Now, I'll be honest, it, this sounds kind of silly to me. It sounds like a little bit of overkill. Are you kidding me? This is, this is what happened. What do you mean, or am I kidding you? Oh, this, this is overkill? He should... He should have done, taken the honorable route and uh, you're so, you're Harry so, Carey. I was going to say, uh, you're, uh, you're saying he he needed to just, you know, do what a lot of people did back then. and What's that? Uh, take their own life. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he obviously, I mean, I'll be honest. It sounds like he dishonored his family. Uh, and his And his city. And his city. But man, here's the deal. When I when I went to research this story, it seems like the Japan's uh, kind of you know their culture, not culture, but their kind of government uh, bureaus are having some issues because back in November, there the another company had to apologize when a Japanese train departed 20 seconds early, and it caused. It caused some issues. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm sure everyone who's listening knows Japan and their stickler being real big on time management. <coughs> yeah, <You> okay. <coughs> so Nick's drinking a bunch of cinnamon whiskey, just downing a half a bottle just now. My friend, that is orange mango body armor. <laughs> it is delicious. If you never had it, it's good. Just don't get it down the wrong pipe. I do apologize. But Eric, what were you... <coughs> Please, don't let me dying over here interrupt you. Please continue making your point. Uh, so Japan is big on order, right? Yes. Like, yes. Here's, a, here's a story. Japanese couple apologizes for getting pregnant before their turn. Whatever that means. I have to actually click on this story because I just happened to see, see it. Uh, this is back from April. But I didn't remember this. I wish I would have seen this story earlier. But they're so big on structure, and I, I mean, 
they have a pretty large i think their suicide rate for like teenagers is pretty high because part of growing up is finding yourself um within a system within a your culture and sometimes that involves like leaving your culture or like straying to the boundaries of it and they're so strict with it that it uh really stresses out a lot of people but yeah i don't know I think it's pretty garbage. I heard – so they've been trying to, as a culture, lighten up on this um, this work culture because people have died. They have, a, they have a term. It's called work death I think is the uh, translation. But it's basically you work yourself until you die. Like right. people sleep under their desks. They don't leave work for weeks. Not even for three minutes to go get food? Apparently not. And so they work themselves to death. So, I mean, I, well, I'm curious. I, I heard that that kind of this just a few months ago that they had a big push on about having more relaxed work environments. And this sure goes back against it. Now, that worker also had to pay back. They docked his pay for those, what, three minutes, 20 over 26 occasions. So he had to pay back a, a sum of money out of his pay to cover that. That is pretty crazy. I mean, Nick, let me ask you a question. Do you think you, you waste three minutes a day on a task that does not involve your job? Yes. Uh, that is the approximate time it takes me. That's how much time I, I spend peeing. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I go to the bathroom. Well, I, I drink a lot of water. Me too. That's what uh, half gallon a day at least. I have timed myself. I I spend approximately 180 seconds peeing every day. Yeah, 180 seconds during my work time, I should say, in that eight hour period. Like I don't go to the bathroom. I just do it. I just do where I need to. Oh, in my diaper, yes. Yeah, I wear a diaper. So apparently, uh, you know, an employee. My, my my company wants me to. Uh, stay at my desk at all times, and I'm dedicated to that. Yeah, you're you're a, you're a solid man. You should move to Japan, my friend. Uh, so this guy got caught because a coworker was looking out the window. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, the worker was caught when a senior colleague. This guy's 65, so a senior colleague. I'm. A, does that mean like older or no, higher up? It would I be higher up in the company. I'm guessing a 20 year old. I'm pretty yeah. Senior management. Uh, spotted him walking to get takeout food. Now, I also heard read another story that the man looking out the window watching this also got reprimanded for taking his eyes off uh, his his work. His work. Well, he probably took three minutes to to look out the window. <laughs> so he himself was also reprimanded, and they did that one over radio though because it wasn't a big a deal. Oh well, yeah, because he. Uh... He, he was actually doing some work, which is ratting out his Apparently. co-worker. How, like, okay, if I had a co-worker that literally ratted me out for three minutes a day, how much would you absolutely despise that person? Oh, I would, yeah, I mean, I I would definitely defecate on their desk. Uh, yeah, they, golly, escalation. Oh, buddy, I'm telling you. Uh, well, buddy, this is, as we have pointed out, this is the year of the defecation. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. why not just follow with the trend, right? Everybody's doing it. <laughs> just just keep going. It's like fall right along that oh, groove. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It'll take me about three minutes to do, but yeah, it'll definitely. That's definitely what'll happen to that person. But I mean, this this employee said that all he was trying to do was get something different. To change of pace. Get a change of pace. Now, from what I understand, though. And what I've read is that this kind of backfired on the company, as you would think it would in the in the population actually sided with the the worker, uh, the employee. Yeah. And it's brought a lot of questions into kind of like what you said, the the way companies in Japan do things. Uh, you and I have, you know, we we watch anime and we I read manga and that sort of thing like at work. Not at work. Oh, okay. But me neither. Outside, but the thing is that you, you know, for example, One Piece. Their their uh, the writer there for a while. He had to quit because he was sick. He had he had worked himself 
like yeah, you said. So did Nar- so did the writer for Naruto. Remember that? All yeah. those little, he always took little breaks. Yeah, and I think that was to but recuperate. This is a culture that will literally work themselves. Like you said, will work themselves to death. Yes, and I mean, while there is something to be, uh, there is something to be said about that. There is also like a. I mean, they're a hardworking culture, but at the same time, it's almost a... It's a little disgusting, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I understand, hey, I like a good work ethic, but also I like a good play and have fun ethic, too, because I've been that guy that's worked so many hours and trying to do the best I can and try to move forward in my career or trying to get, you know, a little ahead. And in doing so, I didn't have fun. I, I sacrificed time with my family and friends a little bit here and there doing that. And it, it really has never benefited me. No. And I mean, I have, it's not something I've done a ton, but the few times I've done it, I've never really enjoyed it. And it never seemed to work out so well. So I kind of was like, well, and it, put it, that on the back it, burner. it hurts the family. Yeah. I mean, especially cause I, I'm studying counseling and that's, you know, that's one of the big things in doing family counseling. You run into this, this really, it, it can be a real strain on the family when there's a parent who is basically a workaholic. And yeah. That's, that's almost what it seems like the Japan, Japanese culture uh, produces is, is a kind of workaholic mentality. Yeah. I mean, we have workaholics in the, in the U.S., but I think they're a little different. They are. Yeah. A different reason for it. They're doing it. They, I'm assuming out of my limited knowledge, Japan does it out of a culture, cultural, um, it looks good in your culture. You, you have to do these things, uh, to be a specific standing in culture, maybe. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do it because a lot of people avoid their families and want to, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's an addiction in the sense of they're using it to mask maybe problems in other areas of their lives. Right. Well, and like we were talking about earlier, it, it can be something just as, just as, People will play video games to kind of escape or they'll drink or they'll do, you know, certain people get addicted to just about anything. Yes, exactly. And I mean, a big thing right now that, you know, I've, I've kind of been reading about is people are working out too much. They're getting addicted to working out to where they're over. We both done that, haven't we? I don't know that you've gotten pretty ripped and pretty, well, I've gotten pretty ripped, but it, this is, this is where it's called overtraining where they're where they're spending hours i haven't spent like three hours in a gym oh, i've never done that. i think ever but i mean this is like where people will go after work will go to a gym and just spend three hours there or something like that yeah and well, it's it's I've, it's not it doesn't do any good for the muscles or there was a time there's a, there's been a few times in my life that i've i've done over 20 hours of working out in a week i mean just Boot camp stuff and right. like uh, also going for a run. But I'm talking about these people are doing this consistently. Like boot camps normally only last like what four weeks. Oh no, though I mine was year round. Oh, was it? Yeah, I got you. And like once you paid, you could go as many times as you wanted. I got you. And I was like, oh, I'll go here and I'll go then too. You know, but they got in really good shape and it was just kind of fun. And but I got too much for me after a little while. Right, and I can understand that. But I mean, something like this where. Uh, a a worker is just going out to get lunch and and that sort of thing like i could not i mean i i where i work right now they my coworkers are kind of making fun of me cuz i'm about to go i'm about to be married on saturday i'm about to go on vacation and a lot of them are basically saying hey you've got wedding brain it's kind of that i'm not going to do much type mentality i've got right now oh we get those it's um people who are about to they have like a a picture in their head when they're going to retire mm-hmm. and they're like well they they they're well, 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 there's a term we say when that happens i can't remember um senioritis i, I yeah, kind of like senioritis but we no, have it a, is senioritis because normally people are old when they retire yeah I, well we have another term for it you know they see the i don't know there's something about time i can't remember it doesn't matter but yeah, we get the same thing at work. It's like, and the thing is, somebody be like, I'm retiring in two or three years because they know that's when their retirements, they know they're retiring. And this will go on for years. And of course, they don't do anything. Like the company does nothing and the person also does very little. 
Well, but I think we all do it even when we're about to go on vacation. We we all kind of go into that just you gotta ramp down, right? You co- you kind of coast like the last two or three days. But week. You, can't, you can't start new projects. No, no, and, and that's the thing is something like this. I one I'm not gonna sit here and judge a whole culture. I mean, that is their culture. That's that's how they do things. But this just seemed a little excessive. Uh, I mean, here's my question to you. Could you see your... I mean, could you imagine yourself living in this kind of... I, I one, want to visit Japan one day, but could you see yourself living in this kind of culture? I used to... I, I used to, at one point, want to go to Japan, you know, just kind of see the culture, maybe live over there for a time. Uh, because I'm a, I'm big on order. I'm big on structure. It's, it's. A, I would have done good, well in the military. I assume, um, because the better organized and ordered things are around me, the better I work as well. I've noticed, and when things become a little chaotic, like currently, like kind of my work situation is, it, it has become harder. So I have many times wished to go live in Japan, but as I've gotten older, I realize I probably. Uh, would not enjoy it as much as I thought I would when I was younger because uh, I don't as much as I like order I like I need chaos in my I need a little chaos in my life and uh, that because it keeps me uh, keeps my brain active Mm because you get like stuck in like very repetitive things it really your brain does not function as well so i need a little bit of chaos here and there in my life I, you know it's that idea of walking the line between order and chaos is that like uh if you read any jordan peterson he does it talks about it in his in his books and well in his uh 12 simple rule book and he talks about it in his lecturing um, but I, is a concept that I'd, I'd never really heard described like that. And I was like, Oh, that's an interesting way of describing that. It's like the yin yang concept, yin and yang concept Taoism, I think, is that right? Mm-hmm. And where it's like, but it's that idea of walking that, you know, the, the, the line between the black and the white walking that line, Johnny keep, cash, Johnny cash, uh, the line keeping a little bit, your a little one foot and a little bit of chaos and one foot in, in order, the order keeps you safe and structured and the chaos keeps you growing and changing. Mm-hmm. So you don't, but and straying too far into either one, if you stray too much into chaos, your life falls apart. And I've seen that happen to people. And if your life strays too much into order and structure, your life becomes stagnant and stale and you stop, your brain stops developing. Your life becomes very dull and sad, even though everything seems to still be going right, you know? Right. And usually somebody tries to overcorrect and they'll go crazy. You know, you've seen somebody who's had this real structured life, just throw it away and go mad and just do whatever they want. Right. Cause they have strayed too far into one. And, uh, someone who goes too far, I assume into the chaos, they usually don't find their way out very soon because right. it, it gets, it's, it's dark over there. It is. It, so. Well, and that, that's also, you know, they, it, it, it's hard to come out of that by yourself. It's one of those things where people, when they stray into the chaos, normally they, they get lost. Yeah. They get lost or they're, they're either going to have to come and get help or someone's going to have to actually reach out and, and they're going to want to accept help. Right. Also. Yeah. And someone's stuck in like high order. A lot of people think they have it all together, right? you know, and that's, that's another thing that's not true. I know I have a good friend of mine. Uh, his life is high order. And we talk a lot about, he's like, he has, I mean, he makes good money. He uh, is very successful in his career, has a good family, beautiful home, uh, you know, just has it all together. But he's like, I, I struggle being, having joy in my life. Right. And I'm like. And it can be stressful. Because yeah, it, keeping it, that high order. And unsatisfying. Right. It's unsatisfying, but it can be stressful because it, keeping that, you know. Maintaining that, yeah. Maintaining that is difficult. It can be, and it, but unless you get good at it, and if you get good at it, it's not hard, and if you make enough money, it makes it even easier to maintain it, and uh, it, it, it feels like you don't have real control of your life. Well, but there's no real challenge at that. There's point. no challenge, and that's what the chaos. That, that's why you. That's need where little, the chaos comes in. Like, well, I'm trying to think. I do like Toastmasters. I do some public speaking, and these are things that stress me a little bit. Um, I need to write a speech. Apparently, I'm speaking in two weeks. I need to write a speech. I haven't started on it. 
Um, I want to do improv class. I was just talking to you about that. I yeah. thought about jumping out of Testmasters for a time to do an improv class to kind of stretch me and pull on me a little bit and learn some new skills. Um, so that, I mean, that's, that's the kind of chaos at one point, this podcasting was a little bit of chaos, but now it's, it's kind of easy. It's, it's not it, like we're good, but it's like no. the idea of it's easy. It's not hard to talk into the mic for 30. Well, an hour gets a little hard at times, but 30 minutes isn't too bad. Right. Well, and that's the thing is, and what we're, we'll discuss that, discuss where we're going with this here in a second. But I, I mean, I want to get back to this just really quickly. I don't. I don't know that something so structured I'd be able to survive in. I know you're not supposed to. You're not. But I mean that that'd be a hard hard environment especially if you're uh if your <laughs> company is docking your pay and things like that for just taking a 3 minute what's technically a lunch to go get some food and try something different a change of pace which is I guess what this guy was trying to do is to add a little chaos after However many Added years. a lot of chaos, I guess. Yeah. Caused a lot of chaos. A uh, total of 78 minutes of chaos. Over seven months? Over seven months. Are you kidding me? I've, waste, I've wasted seven to eight minutes of time in the bathroom at work. Uh, uh, just sitting there to another, looking at my phone. Yeah. You know how it yeah. is. Yeah, buddy, I'm right there with you. So Not not in the same bathroom. I'm just saying I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the... That'd be weird since we work really far apart. It's like I just walk in one day. I'm like, hey, Nick. Yeah, well, no, that'd be weird. Is like I'm, you just get in the stall. I'm like, you know, the next stall over, you just hear Eric. <laughs> yeah, You're like Nick. Like, what are you doing at OU? Like, I just wandered here. Yeah, but you know, that's the, that's the thing is like, I mean, like you said, this we do different things. Like, I mean, obviously, me uh, starting to date Casey and. Yeah, going to marriage added a little bit of chaos, and yeah, and, and you're you're uh, studying your classes. Yeah, my classes has do, have have done that. Your different activities plus watching your kids. I mean, that adds a bunch of chaos. Three, yeah, I mean, three I, children are are chaos. Yeah, I mean that does parenting is is a challenge in just life it, generally. It is. It so, is. And I have good kids, but it's still not easy. Right. Oh, um, there's no as I always say, there is no manual on how to how to take care of children. I mean, nah. there, there isn't, I don't think there's good there's, guidelines, but no, yeah. there's no, like every kid's so different. I mean, my, I mean, I don't think there is so any different. way to do an orderly way to raise kids. Oh man, they're a nightmare. I mean, I, man, I, I was in VBS this week and man, talk about ordered chaos. And that's what that was volunteering doing that. Herding cats. Yeah. It's not, it's a lot of people say herding cats. I mean, yeah, at least cats are soft and, they keep their mouth shut a little well, bit. I guess it should be herding kittens. Uh, that's yeah, the, that's kittens. The, that's the well, where they don't go in a straight line. Do you remember that? Uh, this is out of left field, but do you remember the? There was a uh, Super Bowl commercial where it was a beer commercial where they actually had cowboys that were herding, herding cats. Oh, really? Yeah, and they were sitting there talking about how they lose like a ton of cats every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all is dang near impossible. That's was, pretty good. You have was, to look that up. It was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. But yeah, I did that, and you know, it, it was interesting and fun. One really bad kid, and outside of him, it was great. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Well, it always is. There's always like, you know, hey, this is, this was fun, except for little Jimmy, who you know, yeah. pulled so and so's hair, or got upset when he lost, or that, yeah, cried nonstop. Don't get your way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's oh, always man. that's always the way it is. Yeah, it is. We uh, we've come a long way since talking about the J- Japanese culture and this man, is a p- podcast, man. We talk about whatever we want. We do. We talk about life. Well, Eric, as you know, I'm about to get married. Yeah, you are. I'm gonna be. You know, there's a little something uh, I need to educate our our okay. listeners for a second. Oh, you're such a good person. After you get married, there's this little break you take. It's called a honeymoon. You get about three minutes. Yeah. Well, four minutes. Four minutes. Um, I think you'll only need one or two. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> less, yeah. Anyway. Um, but, you know, I'm taking a week off. So that means either you're going to do a puck podcast 
or something by yourself or with or grab somebody to do it with you or nothing or nothing which is probably what's going to well, happen being, it's going to be fourth of july oh that's a solid point so i probably won't do anything but uh we we may have to because of there's going to be a little bit of a distance between Eric and I. We may have to change the format up a little bit of yeah. yeah of, I mean of how we how we do these. Speaking things. of chaos, you gotta be mo- you're mo- you've moved. You you pretty much done moving. Yeah. Well, so. all my all my stuff is in a room, uh, still in boxes, stacked everywhere. It's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It's, remember that growing thing you talked about? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to do do the whole organization thing when we get back. We're not really. We're trying not to look into the room because it uh, makes me cry. It, it's well, it's all your stuff. It is. It is. And she's like, just throw a match in there. Let me. Yeah, I think that has actually been considered by her. And God bless her. She's a she's a saint of a woman with a lot of patience. <laughs> uh, let me just explain to you how I how I pack. Oh man, you do not have to explain <laughs> to me how you pack, brother. No, let me, no, I'm talking to the audience. Okay, go ahead. Let me explain to you. Normally, when people pack, they will ride on a box kitchen. I used to do that long, long time ago. It was the first, I, I, I first, think first you, couple of moves. Yeah, you did that. You did that down to when you went to uh, Fort Worth. Uh, then I did it to, to when I did went to Utah. Okay. But after that, I I got tired of moving. So basically, you just toss stuff into... What I do is I put four boxes out, and as I'm grabbing stuff, I just throw, throw it over my shoulder towards the boxes. Whatever box it lands in, it goes in. That's a way of packing. So you might, in with your, in with your plunger, you might have toothbrushes. In with your silverware, you might have i don't know what it's it's really a it's really a grab bag of stuff yeah uh it's called bachelor patching or packing bachelor packing that's true i i think when you moved in utah when i helped you move there uh, it was a good move um it was a good move. that was a hard one uh, i think you had a few boxes labeled but most of them weren't i think it was it's kind of your transition be- between labeling to and completely um, stop labeling. Yeah, I just don't care I anymore. I think you had like a kitchen and you had books. Man, your books are so heavy. Yeah. But. Well, it, uh, it, it, it's gotten to be something and God bless her. She came in like a champ and, uh, just, just said, Hey, we, uh, we can handle this. And I did see a little tear kind of come out of the corner of her eye as she said it and she tried to but she said yeah we can do this like get married or handle all your garbage handle all the garbage (laughs) okay you know you know when somebody's like yeah we can do this but on the inside you can see like i don't want to do a person like crying for help yeah i've seen that yeah i that's what happened i believe that's, that's she's a pretty orderly person right she is. She is. I she mean, she came in and actually, you know, to her credit, she she had been at an appointment that she had during the day, and then she came she came to the house and met us, and we were already unloading. And my dad had already called her and apologized for the. Why is your dad apologizing? Because he he blames himself. He he says that he tried to domesticate me and failed. And did he actually say that? Yes, he did. Man, that's pretty good. But I like that. He apologized to, to Casey, but she came in. She's like, oh, this isn't near as bad as what I thought, which I'll be honest, it was bad. But I don't know what in the world she pictured, but apparently I got under that. And, and, that nice. and, and for me, it wasn't as bad as she pictured. Yeah. For me, that's a win. That's a, that's a W right there. So <laughs> she, she needs a thank you. Yeah. She came in and just organized everything. It was, it was beautiful. It She's was, like box full box, bo- box, bo- yeah. organize the house. Okay. Make sure those boxes of similar size are together. Well, she pushed it all in a room and pretty much shut the door. That's how she organized. Oh, it. so she just got out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. I so, got you. Uh, but did you get all your weights moved? I did. Oh man, I feel so bad for I guys. I forgot. <laughs> I, Friday, I was like, "I'm gonna come help you move. I'll, I'll bring my kids. We can all help you at least pack up." 
And I woke up Saturday morning and absolutely forgot and didn't that whole Saturday. I don't think I did. I think I went swimming like that afternoon. But, but until then, I did nothing. I'm going to admit, I have an obscene amount of weight. Oh, yeah, he's a full gym. I do. And uh, much to my brother and my friend Ryan. Oh, Ryan helped. Who, That's good. Who constantly complained while we moved about the weights. Uh, we did finally get them all put in there. And so, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was something. It was something. Yeah, I mean, at the big U-Haul. Well, I mean, we've moved those weights before. We've done well, yeah. that. I got the big U-Haul. It. They didn't have the one I wanted, but they were like, we got a, the biggest one, the 26-footer. Like, I'm like, is there an upcharge for that? Like, no. I'm like, sure, I'll take it. Yeah, the 20. We, we came back in the 15. Yeah. Yeah, well. And we smashed everything in there. Yeah, we got it. We got it all in there. <laughs> that was I mean, great. And the car behind. Yeah, we did. We towed the car. It was amazing. It was. We were good. We were very good. Well, everyone, I'm going to draw us to a close here. We've hit the 30-minute mark. We hope you've enjoyed listening. You know what? Next week, take a break on us. Celebrate, the, celebrate our country. Uh, you know what? I'm just saying. Take a three-minute break for yourself. There you go. I mean, just not in Japan. Eric, but you take three minutes and tell them where they can find us. Uh, three minutes? I must talk really slow to last three minutes. Take three 30-second periods. <laughs> okay. You can find us all over the internet as you see fit. We reside in many places, such as Facebook and YouTube and Podbean and t- uh, Twitter. Uh, we reside in all these places, and if you want to find us... For most of those, search Pull Up a Chair Podcast in whatever thing you want to search us on. And and on Twitter, look uh, at Pull Up a Chair Pod. Uh, that's at Pull Up a Chair Pod. You can tweet us there. The, uh, tweet us or Facebook us is the best way to kind of get in contact with us in a reliable manner. Uh, we also have our own website, puckpodcast.website, P U C podcast.website. Uh, what else can you find us on? We are on, uh, what's that streaming service that we're on? That we, no, 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 no. Not Stitcher. The one, we are in Stitcher. No, no, no. What's the other one that we finally got on? Pornhub. <laughs> I wish we might have more listeners. Uh, <laughs> what is that streaming service? The real popular one that I don't use. That YouTube. Com- that competes with Pandora. Uh, Spotify. Spotify. We are on Spotify. Uh, you can find us there if you didn't know that. And also you can find us, Alexa, Can if you just say, Alexa, play Pull Up at Your Podcast. About 50% of the time, it will play, play one of our podcasts. Well, so that, t- t- just try it. Like, and, and I mean, it'll it'll play it 50% of the time, but you know what? You, apparently, you can only get the latest one. Yeah, it gives you the, well, you can go backwards. Okay. Like, it'll play the one before that. It'll play, I think, the 20 of them. Oh, okay. Well, if you got a good, I don't know, 24 hours just to listen, yeah, you just start it and keep it going. Keep it going. We'd love, to, we'd love that. And it'll all, it won't be our voices. It'll all be done in Alexa voices. <laughs> it's, it's done, we do it through transcript and have Alexa read it yeah, out to Yeah, it's, it's amazing. On both sides. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, you, you haven't lived until you've heard. You should try it. Yeah, you, until you've heard Alexa <laughs> talk, talk about whatever we talk about in our time period. But you know what? Have yourself a great week. We hope you enjoy your 4th of July. Enjoy some time off, celebrate, barbecue, whatever it is you're going to do, and have yourself a great day. Go America! Go America!